Good morning and a very happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. Please join us in our song service this morning. Our first song will be Heavenly Sunshine. Now sing, change my heart, O oh God. Next song, let's sing the song, My Peace I Give Unto You. Oh, 
Sabbath day is so beautiful, isn't it, Mimi? Erika? Yes, hey, come here, come here. Yo! Yeah. Oh, this reminds me of one Bible verse. It's, it says in Miso, Lal Pacho Min Veng Tu Aniya Katya Chom Dabang. To Mala Hirvagar Kurnat Basavita, To Mala Shant Pana Zavar Nito. तो माझा जीव ताजा तवाना करीतो तो आपल्या नामस्त मला नीति मार्गाने चालवतो चाहे मैं घोर अंकर से भारी हुए तराई में हो कर चलूं तो भी हानि से ना डरूंगा क्योंकि तू मेरा साथ रहता है तेरे सोटी से और तेरे लाठी से मुझे शांति मिलती है तू मेरे सताने वालों के सामने मेरे लिए मेज बिछाता है तूने मेरे सिर पर तेल माला है Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we will dwell in the house of our Lord forevermore. What a beautiful thought. You and I have an opportunity to come into the house of the Lord this morning to sing praises to Him and to raise our voices. With these simple words, I'd like to welcome each one of you for this Sabbath school. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our dear Holy Father, I want to thank thee, dear God, for giving us another beautiful day in our lives. Dear God, we realize that it's a gift for us. Bless us so that we may be able to use it to glorify your name. I want to thank thee, dear God, for being with us throughout the week and bringing us safely to this day and allowing us, dear God, to worship Thee freely in spite of all this coronavirus all around us, the effects of it. We come to Your house, dear God, to praise Your name. We want to thank You for giving us this opportunity. Dear God, at this morning, we ask Thee to give us a receptive mind, a willful heart, dear God, to follow Your instructions. Let everything spoken here, let everything which is sung over here be a blessing to us, dear God. Let it come out from your throne so that it may turn into a blessing for each one of us. Once again, we commit ourselves to your care and keeping. Bless the program, dear God. Bless everyone who is taking part so that the whole Sabbath school may turn into a blessing for each one of us. Bless us so that as we go through the study hour too, we may be able to grasp new meaning from the lessons what we learn. Once again, we want to thank thee, dear God, for listening to my prayer. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. It's good to see each one of you every Sabbath waiting for this program. But the word happy Sabbath, are we happy? Every day when we see the news, every morning when we wake up, we see the COVID cases increasing. No, today I'm not going to talk about the COVID thing, but a very important thing. As we know that there's a day of judgment coming. As in the Bible says that God is going to shake the world. 
God is going to shake the world in such a way that we will be depressed. We'll be in a situation where we seem that there is no way. We are, we'll be hopeless. And we search here in and around to find solution. But God has given answer for that. And where do we find that? In the Word, the Holy Word, the Living Scripture. As God says that, if you find yourself lost, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because the Lord is my shepherd. And as a shepherd tries his level best to protect his sheep, God has given us many opportunity. Many, many times he comes and gives us the results, the visions showing that I'm always there for you. Just put yourself in a position of judgment where you're standing in front of judge and trials and temptation come towards you and your judgment is being passed. Do you think you'll be saved? As a human tendency, we may feel sad and put in our mind that yes, we failed. Because we think that God has changed his ways. Does it? Think for a moment. Centuries, thousands of years ago. No, God has not changed. God has not changed his way and has not adapted according to our generation. He is still the same. I am the God that changes not. But what has changed? Our ways, our thinking, and our thought of living the life. When God says that I have prepared a way for you, that means he has already prepared the way for you. Not now, before, before the creation of the world. Then why you have to worry? You have to be very happy that today you're standing over here for God has given his only begotten son that he died for you and for me. But we always think that God has changed his way. No. What has changed? Our way of life. But he has never changed. Today, when God comes and says that you have been judged, what would you like to say? I would like to stand and say, God, I don't need justice for the judgment, but I need mercy. I need grace. I need forgiveness. And today, I want to tell you that God loves you. God forgive each and every one of you. And you should be very happy when you go sleep to the night and say that God has forgiven you. It has taken time for me to settle down and think about the what is going in and around because sitting in the home and thinking that what is my next move, what I'm going to do in my life, I'm so tense. But God has already said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And anybody who wants peace, come to me. No money can buy nothing. No manly boast can send you heaven. Only the way that is Jesus Christ. As it says in Psalms, even though I walk through the valley of death, your staff and your rod, your rod protect me. And with this, we know that God is always there with us. You may ask questions to God or to the people that why is happening? I have read the Bible. I cannot answer you. But one thing I can say that God will not change. God will not change his judgment because his judgment is just. God will not change his love because he just. God cannot change. But you must. Good morning and a very happy Sabbath to everyone. It's a pleasure welcoming you for this Sabbath day. Though we are stressed at home, we should be thankful to witness this Sabbath day. This quarter covers all the reports from West Central Africa Division. And today our report comes from Liberia. Let us straight go to Liberia to our reporter, Prafula. Thank you, Aaron. Happy Sabbath to you too. Monrovia is the capital and the largest city of Liberia. The city is named in honor of US President James Monroe, a prominent supporter of the colonization of Liberia and the American Colonization Society. Along with Washington, it is one of two national capitals to be named after a US president. At the age of 19, Alfonso Peter Ewa 
fled civil war in Liberia by boarding a train and traveling to Guinea. Little did he know that the trip would take him to eight countries and that he would return home with an Indonesian wife 14 years later. Times were tough when Alfonso left in 1992 and he quickly abandoned the Seventh-day Adventist church of his childhood. With the help of a humanitarian agency, finished his studies in Guinea but then found himself homeless. He resorted to any scheme that he could think of to earn money. He sold heroin, he tricked people out of money, he laundered money. After a year, he longed for new opportunities, so he illegally bought a Guinean passport and moved to Senegal. For four years, he sold heroin, tricked people out of money and laundered money. Seeking more opportunities, he traveled to Tunisia and then to Jordan, India, Thailand and Indonesia. In each country, he sold drugs, tricked people and laundered money, earning enough to live on and to move to the next place. He found money could buy anything, including visas to pursue his travels. In Indonesia's capital, Jakarta, Alfonso began to think hard about life. He remembered attending church on Sabbath. He felt bad because he knew he wasn't obeying God's commandments. One day, he spoke about God while playing pool with a Spanish stranger. The stranger invited him to his church the next Sunday. The U.S. missionary who led the Sunday church listened to Alfonso's story and offered to help pay his house rent. In exchange, Alfonso worked on the church grounds and managed its sound system. Alfonso kept thinking about the Sabbath. He found the address of an Adventist church and began to attend worship services every Sabbath while still working at the other church on Sundays. With only a high school education, he longed to study at a university, but no one seemed able to assist him. The Sunday church didn't help. The Adventists also didn't help. But they did reconnect him with his parents in Liberia. He hadn't spoken with them since fleeing Liberia. Three years passed and the Sunday church stopped supporting him. Alfonso returned to selling drugs, tricking people and laundering money. But something big happened in his life around that time. He got married. While working at the Sunday church, he had fallen in love with Wastina a relative of the missionary's housekeeper. After a while, Alfonso felt the familiar desire for new opportunities and moved to China. After four months, he sent for his wife. While in China, his thoughts returned to God and he found an English language Bible at a bookstore. One day, his eye fell on Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2 which reads, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. My life is filled with vanity, he thought. I need to go home to Africa. He and Vastina flew to Liberia in 2006. Back home, he had a tearful reunion with his parents. He gave his heart to Jesus and went to church every Sabbath. Vastina joined him and after some time, gave her heart to Jesus. Today, Alfonso works as a logger in Buchanan and Wastina sells rice, oil and other groceries from a roadside stall in front of their house. They have three children ages 12, 8 and 5. Alfonso readily shares his story about God's grace in his life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When I feel guilty, the fear of the Lord makes me wise to change my life from the street. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help to build a K6 school in Buchanan, Liberia to replace a school that was lost in Liberia's civil war. my 
shepherd I'll not want He makes me Sabbath Church. I'm indeed very happy and excited to study the Word of God once again with all of you all. It is indeed a pleasure for, for me to study this lesson by the title Seeing, Je Seeing People Through Jesus' Eye, which is lesson number three. And the author has cho chosen the memory text from Matthew chapter, chapter 4 verses 19 which I am reading from King James Version, which says, He hath said unto me, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, before we move any further, let us pray. Our most gracious, kind, and loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning light that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, for your scripture and the Bible that we can study. Lord, we humble ourselves, and we open up our mind, Lord, to study what you want to teach us, to understand what you want to, us to understand, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As per the text, which says, He saith unto me, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now here God says, You come to me, and I will make you, instead of you being a fisherman, I will make you fishers of men. Which shows very clearly to us, that God sees every person by some potential in that person. It does not matter who the person is. It does not matter where the person comes from, where the person belongs to. But what it matters is the person. Because every person, every human being is important in the sight of the Lord. God calls and equips us to represent Him. He doesn't call an equipped person. He doesn't want a person to be ready to come to him, but he, he can make anybody ready. There's also a saying which says, God does not choose as a righteous, but he chooses a person and makes him righteous. Amen. Now, 
we need to see how did Jesus see people because this lesson talks about you must see people according to the Jesus eyes so first of all we need to know how did Jesus see people and I really appreciate the words used by Pastor Mark Finlay in our quarterly in our lesson today they're wonderful words and I wouldn't want to miss those words I would like to read some of the words verbatim from the quarterly and let us please try and understand what these words mean how did Jesus see people he says Jesus saw men and women as winnable for his kingdom that means he is seeing every individual to be the winner and not the loser there is not a single person on this planet earth who Jesus thinks could be a loser after Jesus prepares him so he says he saw each one through the eyes of the divine compassion now his eyes when he sees us he sees with a, with a divine compassion now is does that mean that we do not see with the compassion no we also see a lot of people with the compassion but the only difference is that Jesus sees every single individual with compassion and we see selective people with compassion people who are poor people who are needy people and some people who we like people who we dislike and they're poor and needy we still do not look at them with compassion you see that's the difference between uh, uh, seeing from Jesus eyes and seeing from our own eyes. that makes a difference going ahead he saw Peter not as a loud not as a rough loud mouthed fisherman but also as a mighty preacher of the gospel he used to yell, he used to shout a lot, but God did not see him as a person shouting in a loud mouth, but God saw him as the preacher of gospel, how he'd be able to preach the gospel. He saw James and John not as a quick-tempered, fiery radical, but also as enthusiastic proclaimers of his grace. Look at that, how James and John were and what Jesus saw, what he looked at them. In continuation, he saw a deep yearning of genuine love and acceptance in the heart of Mary Magdalene, in the heart of Mary Magdalene and Samaritan woman, and the woman with the issue of blood. He saw Thomas not as a cynical doubter, but as one of the sincere questions, sincere questions whether they were Jews or Gentile, male or female, a thief on the cross, a centurion or a demon possessed madman, Jesus saw their God given potential and viewed them through the salvation's eye. My friends, brother and sister, church members, Jesus sees every person for the potential of the salvation in the heaven. We do not see every person with the same eye. Now this is what we have to learn and uh, to see people through Jesus eye what must we do? We have to tune in with the Savior. We have to be closer in walk with the Lord. We have to have a closer relationship with Jesus and how can that happen? But that can happen through a regular study of the scripture. That can happen through a regular prayers. That can ha happen by humbling ourselves. And that can also happen by creating a lot of patience in ourselves. Now these are some of the qualities that we keep hearing day in and day out. And these qualities seems to us something very general and common. But let me, let me tell you friends, that if you really ponder upon these qualities, uh, the reading of Bible, being prayerful, being humble and being patient, now this can win you through. And in order for us to see people through Jesus' eyes, these qualities are one of the best qualities that we should always inherit in ourselves. We should always learn these qualities and we should always try to go along with these qualities. And to understand and learn this, we need to dig deep into the scriptures and the example which lead us. This example leads us to a story of a blind man which is found in Mark chapter 8 verses 22. 
And the point here, now what's the story of the blind man? I'm sure you all remember the story of the blind man. Now this blind man was got, was brought by his two, by two of his friends to Jesus. Now this blind man did not come on his own. He did not come by all by himself, but he was brought by two of his friends to Jesus. It was not because of the faith of that blind man. It was the faith of these two friends. Now this blind man was blind from almost more than half of his life and he always he never wanted to have that faith and he may or may not have faith but that does not matter but the friends who got him and he was healed you see he was healed because of his because the faith of his friend the similar story has been shown in, in the the paralyzed man you see his friends got him to jesus and the paralyzed man was not in hundred percent faith However, the friends of this paralyzed man got him to Jesus because they had faith that Jesus is the one who will eagerly and helpfully save this person and heal him. And was he healed? Yes. Yes, the, the paralyzed person was healed. My question is, when was the last time we got somebody to Jesus by our faith? Not by that person's faith, by our faith. Now we always uh, say that you know we would want to help this person, we would help, want to help that person, but that person do not have faith. How would we even get him closer to Jesus? How would we even talk to him about Jesus? Now this person does not have sufficient faith or does not have any faith. Well, according to the Bible, it tells us that it is not necessary for that person's faith because he will build in the faith of your faith. So your faith is must and we, may, we must remember to bring in people to Christ by our faith. Look at the blind man. Huh? It was not the faith of this blind man but his friend's faith again. Sometimes we should carry someone on the wings of our faith. To move on. So what about the second touch? We remember in the story when they got the blind man to Jesus and Jesus had to touch him twice. Well, did that required? Was that required? Did Jesus have to touch this person twice? Well, that was actually not required, but it was to teach a lesson. You know, God touched, Jesus touched this person once on his eyes and asked him, what do you see? And this person says, I see men walking like trees. That means he could see wig, he could see blur, he could not see much clear. And he says, I can see men walking like trees. And what Jesus did, Jesus once again touched his eyes and he was completely healed and he could see everything so clear. Now, what happens with us is we sometimes look at people like the moving trees. We cannot look at them clearly. We do not give them a second chance. We try doing things for them once. We try getting them closer to Jesus. We try getting them closer to church. We try getting them closer to our Lord. Do not, if doesn't works out, we give up. Here it says, we should not give up. Because of a negative perception, we do not approach them the second time. You see, it's all because we see with our eyes and we do not see them with Jesus' eye. Because if we look at them with, the, with Jesus' eye, we can give them a second touch. We do not have to go with the perception that we have about them. That, you know, this person is impossible. You, no matter how much you talk to him, he's not going to listen to you. He's not going to follow Jesus. He's not going to come to, to, this, to the church. And, you know, you finally give up. Here it says, do not give up. If Jesus has done it in twice and was made, the blind man was made clear here, you can try twice, thrice and more time and you can bring the person to the fold of Jesus. We also need to learn the lesson of acceptance. He can use us as we are. It says, if you read Matthew chapter 11 verses 22, Jesus says, come unto me all ye labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. All ye labor, anybody come unto me and I will give you rest. He loves us to come to him just as we are. 
We do not have to change ourselves. We do not have to do anything. We are in the sinful world. We, we may be a part of the sinners. We may be doing something wrong. We may be thinking ourselves unworthy. But if you look at yourself, if you look at anybody with the eyes of Jesus, he is ready to accept us as we are and we got to surrender to him and he's ready to change us and he's ready to mold us into his into his way into his fashion so that he can use us for his cause or he wants to he wants us to come to him just the way we are what are the way we are it's like we're sinful we're helpless we're dependent we are sinners and he wants us to come as we are now, this is something we need to remember we have to come to him as we are because we cannot do anything all by ourselves. We cannot do anything without the help of Jesus. So we need to come to him, surrender to him, and he will take care of us. And remember one thing, when we say we are sinners, we, are, uh, we do a lot of mistakes, we cannot come to Christ, we, we must hide ourselves somewhere, we've done so many mistakes, we've done blunders, please remember, that Jesus will help you in every situation. He says, come to me and live. Why do you want to die? An amazing God, isn't it? He says, why do you want to die? Come to me and live. Just come as you are. He's, he's ready to accept us as we are. So always see people through the heavenly eyes. We don't have an heavenly eyes. And if we want to see people through the heavenly eyes, we need to pray and ask God to help us to let us see everybody through the heavenly eyes. If not, if we see ourselves or if we see people with our own eyes, it could sometimes be brutal. Because we see both the sides, we see the negative and the positive. But when it talks about heavenly eyes, heavenly eyes only looks at the positive side of, of yours and not the negative side. Jesus always treated people with love, respect and dignity. Can we do that with everybody? Can we respect everybody with love, with respect and dignity? Well, we could do that to some, but not to all. That's the difference. Jesus, God does it to all, irrespective of who we are and what we are. Let's look at John chapter 4 verses 3. 234 the story of the Samaritan woman on the way when Jesus and the disciples were going to to Galilee and they went through Samaritan imagine now they could have gone to Galilee through the other way also they did not really have to go through the way of Samaritans why did Jesus decide that there were disciples calling Jesus and saying we don't really have to go through the Samaritans you know how they had uh, you know in those days we know uh, what is the kind of dislike that they had had among uh, themselves well I'm, I'm being very polite in saying dislike but we know the conditions in those time how bad they were however Jesus, uh, the disciples said we could go through the other way around. Why? Through the Samaritans. But here, what was the reason? We need to see what was the reason why Jesus went through the Samaritans. Jesus went through the Samaritans because he had the task to do. He had a plan. He had a plan that he had in his mind and he wanted to go through the Samaritans. Now, what was the reason? Read Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 6. Where it says, when I pass by thee, I ask thee to live. Every time Jesus passed by anyone, he gave them life. Okay, well, let's go to John chapter 7, uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. A conversation between Jesus and the woman. The conversation was that this woman came to draw water from the well. And here Jesus came to drink because Jesus was traveling and he was thirsty and he wanted to drink some water. And when Jesus wanted to drink some water, he asked the lady to give him water to, to quench his thirst. And he asked that lady to give him water. Why this conversation was happening? Because Jesus wanted time of that lady. Jesus wanted to do anything. Jesus was ready to do anything to come closer to this lady and save this lady and give this lady life. He asked her to give him water to drink. We, we need to listen to this very carefully. Christ for our sake became poor. 
for our sake everybody's sake Jesus became poor but for the sake of this lady he became beggar he asked her for the water he put his hand and he asked her and said lady can you give me water he became uh, he became a beggar what what a God we serve what a wonderful God we serve uh, you, you see if you take uh, if you take the signs of the times of June 20th 1892 where it says those who have the spirit of Christ will see all men through the divine compassion those who have the spirit of Christ it's very important my friends we need to we need to plead we need to request we need to plead God to give us the spirit of Christ only and only then we can see 100% everybody through the divine eye of compassion and this divine eye of compassion has is with Jesus Christ and we ask for it and we ask for it we get it no matter what may be the social position no matter what his wealth or how how high his education if the man is in Christ he will not listen to this carefully he will not be unkind un courteous, hard-hearted, and merciless, since every soul is entirely dependent upon God for every blessing he enjoys, how patient, how merciful we should be with every creature on this earth. I want to pray to God to help me see the souls as the candidate of heaven, every single candidate. So, if we ask he he's ready to give in your, if you lack direction in your life he is just ready to show you the life and the everlasting life and the second part of our lesson today is begin where you are every person is an important candidate as we discussed for the salvation of Christ every person is important so where should we begin we should begin where we are as said in Acts chapter 1 verses 8 but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judah and Samaria and to the end of the earth for disciples the message was clear they needed to begin from where Jesus Christ was crucified they, they needed to begin from there because everything was so fresh in the people's mind that they had to begin from there. That was the message for the, for the disciples. What was the message for us? The message for us was to begin from where we are. Where are we today? We are at our home. We are at our society. We are at our, uh, our relatives. So the first thing we need to do is we need to begin from home. We need to look at our children. We need to be parents to teach our children the love of God. We need to teach our children to fall in love with God. And how can that happen? Could that happen without the presence and presence of or the intervention of the Holy Spirit? I don't think so. So to call for the presence and to call for the Holy Spirit of uh, from heaven what do we need to do we need to have a family prayers we need to have a Bible study we need to sit down and spend time with family along with the intervention of Christ along with the intervention of Holy Spirit it is not just our family it is also our surroundings it is our neighbors it is our society it is where we live we need to make sure that every person from a family from our society from our neighbors should be saved so we have to be light of the world and we also have to be light of our home you know many times we hear uh, someone saying this person is different in the church this person is different at home this person is different at the workplace well we cannot be like that we have to be the same Christian we cannot be different everywhere and same Christian at home same Christian at the workplace same Christian at the community same Christian at society we need to be the same Christian and you will have to begin with the, with the people where you are 
Now, there are many times that those people must have seen you doing something wrong. Those people must have seen you doing something blunder. And, well, that does not matter. You need to show them, no matter how bad you were, or no matter what, how many mistakes you must have done, but you need to show them that we have our Jesus, we have a Lord who is forgiving, and you have been forgiven, so that they can see your life, and they can, they can follow Jesus and his, and his footsteps. <clears throat> Some examples are also from John chapter 1 verses 40 and 41 where you see it, it begins, it, it's speaking about Andrew, it's speaking about uh, a beginning from home. Andrew began from his home and so are we asked to begin from home. First thing that we need to think about how do we need to behave at home and we also know that there are some people who are hard to understand and who are hard to explain in that case we need to ask God to help us we need to pray to God and ask him to help us to to help this person who's hard to understand and who's hard to explain and also we need to remember this has to be done from home so first thing every morning that we need to do is first thing we should we should think what kind of act I should do to help others what kind of tender words I should speak that that should help others because these tender words are are accepted and needed by the husband they're needed by the wife they're needed by the children they're needed by the all the people all around us so we need to be kind we need to be polite when we speak to them and we need to remember this every morning see Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 it says you are the light of the world and it gives it gives the shine to the entire planet earth and now when you're dealing with people where you are you also find difficult people around you you see when you talk about dealing with difficult people I believe Jesus is the best one uh, he's the master of dealing with difficult people uh, you know I had many times I had many experiences where I had to deal with difficult people in my life and not just myself it's not that I had to deal with difficult people and but to be honest to you I was being very difficult at times for some people to deal with and so it's vice versa we can be difficult people and we can have difficult people also to deal with now how do we deal with these people Jesus gave us very good examples to deal with this difficult people it is not difficult there is no it says uh, there is no one who was too difficult for Jesus that that the gospel could not reach to his heart and change his life all it takes for us to understand how he dealt with those difficult people and we can follow the same thing to deal with our difficult people and bring them to the fold of the Christ and to bring them to salvation I have three examples that I can share today with you so if you look at the first one call of Peter and Andrew that is given to us in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19 so how did Jesus seek to reach Peter Andrew James and John with the gospel he did it in four ways we need to be very carefully listening to these four ways because these are the ways that are going to help us to deal with difficult people like them he allowed the Holy Spirit to lay down the groundwork second disciple as they are willing to follow we need to wait for them to be willing to follow we cannot get behind them we cannot get rigorous on them we cannot go you know nagging them and every time going and taunting them and telling them to get behind come come with me follow Jesus you know we need to we need to give them time they need to be willing to follow first of all make and the third one is make a direct call at the right time the fourth one offer a choice that is what Jesus did to uh, everyone he offered a choice he explained he spoke to them he gave them all that he was supposed to and after that he left them giving a choice like we have choice today with us he gave them choice whether to continue with your past life or to follow him and have everlasting life and have salvation uh, for them we have to choose whether we need to continue to follow our past we need to give ourselves 100% to Christ so that he 
uses us according to his will for our salvation and for our everlasting life now the second one is appeal to unnamed scribe in mark chapter 12 verses 28 an unnamed scribe asked jesus which is the first commandment of all the commandments now we remember the commandments how many were there 613 commandments in the old testament what well, they all look like in commandment now when all these 613 commandments were there the unnamed scribe asked jesus which is the first commandment and jesus answered in mark chapter 12 verses 29 to 31 the first of all commandments is hear o israel the lord our god is one lord and thou shalt love the god thy god with all thy all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment now he had given him the first commandment and the, so the scribe said to him in mark chapter 12 verses 32 to 33 the scribe answer uh, and said well master thou said the truth and there is one god and there is none other but he and who love him with all heart and with all understanding and with all soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all the burnt offering and sacrifices and here now since jesus saw that he was answering wisely then jesus said in mark chapter 12 verses 34 thou art not far from the kingdom of god and no man after the dust ask him any question thou art not far from the kingdom of god now we go to the last one the third one thief the thief on the cross if you remember jesus led by an example jesus did not go to the person jesus did not explain anything to the person or or anything from the doctrine jesus did not ask him any question all he said was father forgive them for they know not what they do now jesus explained them by doing you know we always say that when you are silent your body language speaks a lot about you and speaks about what you want to say and finally we're on the last part of our study today and the last part is sensing providential opportunities we'll go with point number one which says understand when the lord lays the foundation you have to got to understand when lord lays the foundation of your opportunities any program any opportunities that you get you should always remember that lord is the one christ is the one who's laying down the opportunities for you there are times when it is not you but the holy spirit uh, that takes over there are most of the times we know that uh, th there are some things happening in our life there's something good happening in our life and we we know that it's not us who's doing let's say for example when you're preaching when you're preaching you have prepared something else and when you're on the stage you start speaking something different something better something more powerful because because you know that holy spirit has taken over you that's the second point we should remember and we should let that happen because it's God who wants us to speak as per his will and not as per our will. Third point, when God opens doors, he also walks with you. Now, there are times we realize there's something good happening with us. There are all the opportunities are coming to us. All the doors are opening to us. Now, how do I perform? What do I do? Now, I need to sit down and work it out. I need to put it, put my best of my knowledge and my best of my intelligence to make sure that I do everything better. But you're going wrong there. Remember, God has opened doors for you and he's the one who's going to walk with you till the end till the finish because it's not your work 
It's not the work that you have planned for. It is the work that God has planned for you. And he is going to ensure that, your, that this program, that this work that has been started should be completed successfully. So always remember that God, God not only opens the door, but he also walks along with you in every situation and in everything that, that you're moving on. The fourth point, never boast. Never use God's gift to rob his glory. Never show self-pride in what uh, is from God. Never. So when you get successful, and let's say you have something very good to talk about, you know, instead of saying, well, it's all glory of God. Well, it's all from God. What do we start saying? Well, you know what? I worked day in and day out. I used to wake up all night. I used to think. I used to strategize. I used to plan. I, 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 and I. We forget that was not I. That was God who was actually working behind you and working with you. And you forgot to glorify him. You're robbing off the glory that is supposed to be given for him. So my friends, please do not do never do this mistake. Do not boast about yourself. Do not have self-pride about yourself. But make sure you give all glory to God. And you see your life is going to be progressive every minute and every second. Fifth point. How do we know God is behind everything that you do? For that you have to read uh, Philippians chapter 1 verses 6. I have it with me here. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Six, yes, being confident of this very thing that that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to be with you till the last minute. He's going to be with you till the end. He's going to be with you everlasting. Sixth point, you will never finish without Lord's working in you. Don't think that you'd be able to do everything by yourself. We've already read about that. You will not be able to do anything without God working within you. So always praise the Lord. Always ask help from Him. Pray to Him. And God is willing to be with you and to help you. And it, it, now you see the example of Philip. You know, Philip went to Ethiopia. We all remember the story of when Philip went to Ethiopia. And as a result, what happened? Ethiopia is the only continent or the country that kept Sabbath day as, as, as the holy day for the longest period of time. Even longer than Jerusalem. You'll not believe that. But it is there. And they call it as, as the Kwame's day. Now Kwame's day means the day of the Lord. While <clears throat> when missionaries, when the white missionaries went over there, you know, they tried to change that Kwame's day to the first day of the week. Now, when they tried to change, the Ethiopians called that day as the day of white man. They did not change the Kwame's day. They kept it as it is. But the people who were following the first day of the week, they called it as the white, as the white man's day. Now they knew that because this day has been given by Philip to them and because Philip has given it is from the scriptures and there is no power in the world that can shake their foundation to worship on the Kwame's day and they still worship on the Kwame's day. Friends, this is the end of our end of our study and to sum up everything I will just read four points without explaining them i will just read four points and that is the cold conclusion of today's quarterly and our lesson study number one god is knocking at the door could you could this be your last chance god is knocking at the door open the door receive him he's going to do good to you he's going to give you salvation he's going to give you life this might be your last chance don't take it as a noise Take it as a knock, take it as a knock of an opportunity. Second, God is waiting for us to give our hundred percent to him, to shine as a light for him. Third, don't give up on difficult people because God wants you, God wants to save them through you. Very important task for you. Last but not the least, be like Samuel. Every morning he got, when he heard that small voice, he always said, God speak 
your servant is hearing. Can we be like Samuel? Can we be like these four, four points? Let us all submit ourselves into God. Let us all submit ourselves to Christ because if we see the world through Jesus' eyes, because if we see the world, if we see the people through Jesus' eyes, we will have a, we will have all together a different perception. We will have all together a different life, and we will change our life drastically and dramatically. And God is going to bless us, and God is going to be with us day in and day out. I believe this this study has got each and every one of us a blessing, abundant blessing from from heaven above. And may I thank you for, for your patience and listening to this lesson study. May God bless you and may you have a wonderful and a blessed day ahead. Thank you so much.